Welcome back, everybody, to the Lobster Roll Series Week 10. We're into the Losers Semifinals, despite all appearances. And we are going to be watching Randy and their fan fight Winslot and Magman. Look at the bracket. So there's two things I noted during the break. One, the second and third seed are out. The first seed is still in. That's Randy and their fan. But second and third seed, Steel Blue, Temic Red, and Diamond Friend Flat, respectively, are out. And both of them were knocked into the loser's bracket by Pudis and Thomas, who are currently winning. Like, currently Grand Finals, winner side. So, Pudis and Thomas have really just upset this entire tournament. And they've knocked out Crow and Aeneas. They've knocked out, knocked the second through fourth seeds to losers. The only, it, it'd be kind of funny if Randy was able to get to the Grand Finals and their fan, and then lose, and then Pudis would have upset the, or Pudis and Thomas would have upset the entire tournament. But... At this point, Winslot and Magman did actually have an upset as well, taking out Dimefroid and Flap. I was able to catch the tail end of that during the break, and basically, Dimefroid just overextended. Magman was able to take advantage of that, and then from there, it was just swooping, like, Winslot and Magman swooping back and forth on Lonely Oasis. So, we are going to be... We're going to be looking at the next... Oh, we've already gotten the map bands going. Holy crap, I totally missed that. So we actually have the pick. It is going to be Random Crags! Yay! Random Crags, we finally get to see it here! Awesome! Alright. See, so yeah, I was... Reef and Shores were banned by Magman. Uh, sorry. Sapphire, Sparkles Reef and Sapphire Shores were banned by Magman and Winslot, while Zed and Aqualon Wastes, or Wastelands were banned by Randy and their fan. So, one thing, like I said, I saw in the last match was that Magman and Winslot really like using scout units, like just getting a mass of scout units and swarming around the map at various points in the game. Which Random Crags is pretty good for, or should be, it depends on exactly on the generation, but it'll probably be pretty good for. And of the other maps, the only one that's besides Lonely Oasis that works that way would maybe be Vantage, which wasn't banned, mind you. Lonely Oasis and Vantage were available as well. But, nope. Random Crags. So there we go. We have Random Crags. So, oh. And of course, I probably should show you that it is, in fact, Random Crags. Don't worry, I didn't... There wasn't anything before I missed like the banning happened so fast that I wasn't able to really see it. So with that we can get to the losers semifinals because that is the only match that can be played right now. For real. That's it. It's the loser semifinals. And we'll be starting that in a moment. But yeah, so I'm I'm curious to see what Winslot and Magman do. We've only seen one match of Randy and their fan. And in that match, they had a bit of a hard time really getting going. That was on Zed. And they just kind of got ground down by tanks. Not sure if the, one, the win actually happened at fact selection. But in... But in this, I don't know. There's more room to maneuver. I mean, Randy was trying to do a lot of maneuvering on Zed, and they couldn't really manage it. And there's a lot of attempting to get... What else is they're trying to get? They were trying to get... Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. There was a lot of stuff that Fan was trying to do to try to just... set up, keep things going. And it was a little bit... It was clearly difficult to do given the circumstances. How does this work in the edge? Oh. It just it just does. Oh, the texture's not there, but the geometry is. Cool. Alright, so we have Randy and their fan over in the top right, Winslot and Magman over in the bottom left. It's a bit of a smaller map. What's it look like for now? Ooh, it's that's that is hilly. Bit of a straight shot through the center, but otherwise it is 
probably going to be a cloaky, cloaky maybe spider. I mean, cloak spider has worked in the past for... Ma or no, this is not Magman Winslot. This is Buddhist and Thomas that work for them. Magman Winslot, I don't know. Again, look at the scouting unit, so I could see... I don't think I'm going to go for rovers. That'd be... That'd be an odd move in a map like this. Anyway, Cloaky from Randy's fan. Randy themselves, not really sure what they're going to go for. Same time... Winslot and Magman. Amphbot for Winslot and Magman goes for Cloaky. I mean, no real surprises. Although, Winslot going for Amphbot does mean... We could later see, like, Archer Swarms or Duck Swarms or something. But I expect it's going to be pretty... Actually, I do expect it's going to be a lot of Duck and Archer Swarming. There's a lot of room to raid around this map. No real solid cliffs. And Randy goes for Spiders. Randy going for a little... It's not super aggressive. Magman going in... Actually is going super aggressive, for that matter. Wins a lot setting up an early conch, but then after that, it's all ducks. But yeah, Randy not even thinking about what are they going to do for economy. Just... Nope. Rush in with the glaives. Try to find some room to get around. Again, this map is big. This map is... It's not flat, but it's pretty bot-friendly. In terms of pathing. And it is... Gonna be fairly easy to find and take out some opponents, but I don't think Magman and Winslot are gonna work that way. Again, the last map they were playing more of a grindy match. Getting more economical and then taking the opportunities when they came to get rid of commanders or heavy units. And even then, it was grindy. So I don't expect they're gonna be going for anything too fast or anything too fancy. It'll just be a fairly straightforward pushing game, like expanding into pushing game. Though, there's not a huge amount of metal for that. I mean, there's some. There's like, you know, 15, well, 10 on the ground plus 5 of the commander, so 30. 30 for both players. And then another 30 or so in the center, or not 30, another 20 or so in the center of the map. So yeah, you know, there's like 40 for per team. It's not much for a 2v2, so mostly it will be reclaim. And some overdrive. Yeah, Randy just trying to find some places to hit with their glaives. Beyond that, though, just, you know, sticking with more glaives. Glaive duck. Again, this entire pro side, or south side, rather, is going heavily aggressive. Randy... Randy seems to be well prepared to deal with it, though. I mean, they got this Venom already up. Magman, not sure why they're engaging it. That's just a bunch of dead glaives. There's no reason to do that. I mean, that's the inch that Pro needs. That's it. Like, there's... Magman and Winslot are on the back foot now. They had something of a chance to maintain territory before, but now, no. Pro is just... They've got the momentum. They've got frontal constructors. They have the means to defend both of those things. And Winslot... We're able to at least hold off, but it's not taking the center. It's just keeping them from losing their own for now. How long that lasts remains to be seen. I mean, the center is not even really being held confidently by Southwest. Same time, Pro is just continuing to ramp up more and more expansion, and more importantly, take out more and more of what Southwest is trying to use to hold onto their center. Fortunately for Southwest, it was a little bit of a miss micro there from Randy's fan, but it's that's a small reprieve. Ultimately, it doesn't do that much. Still, though, there's actually a bit of room here for Magman to find the radar. Maybe find a... I wouldn't try to find the Venom. I tried to miss the Venom, but... No, the radar is not a bad pick. Not... I mean... How much does it have? That sees quite a bit, actually. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad pick. Weaver as well setting up. More radar as well, though... I don't think it's going to be super effective. That is in the middle of a valley. Still, Magman, this is exactly what I was talking about. They like to... Like, I mean, okay, at this stage in the game, that's fine. 
But it's more the swarming fact, like the fact that the glazers are all clumped up together. Because Magman refuses to line move for some reason. Even though the Venoms will completely destroy these glaives if they get the chance to. At any rate, that is not yet a threat, though. I mean, Randy's fan doesn't worry about it too much. Randy as well, with the Venoms up front. Pushing forward pretty strongly. Winslot at least has been given some room to breathe. That's the one thing these glaives have done. I don't know if there's going to be much more than that. Magman's commander over on the side. Not being threatened, though. Doesn't look like Randy's too keen on getting there. But that is... Imp right there. That is why you line move. I do not know why Magman insists on point move. I don't know. I know. I, I harp on this all the time. But if you're wondering what Magman could have done, spread out the glaives. He spread out the glaives using line move. It's, just, it's a thing the game is designed around. It expects you to use it so you don't have your units all clumped up together taken out by a single imp. And with that, I... That's... It's looking bad. Pro, Pro definitely has a very strong position to work from. The Venoms are the main threat. Magmas Commander gets stunned out. That's... Uh, is that Magmas Commander yet? Oh, if that Venom got out of the way or more Venoms came in, that would be it. And there it is. Magmas Commander is dead. Magmas Glazer dead. More are coming, though. Actually, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe Magmas Commander might live. It's a very unlikely thing. The glaives go down once again. Magman's commander has nothing to protect them, and that is now it. Magman's commander is dead. Magman has very little to work with. Randy's man coming in here with the glaives to try to take this out. And against all these Ronin, that glaives should be a good choice. A little iffy, because that many Ronin, the glaives actually can't necessarily get through the rocket density. But it doesn't matter. Just go around it. Who cares? Kill everything else. Magman's not using imp, so you might as well not worry about clumping up your glaives. But well, they are using reavers, and you don't want to clump up your glaives against reavers. But still, Cloaky Factory is done. Magman is basically out of the game now. Venom's coming in to clean up. Wins a lot is still okay, but I mean, look at the actual. Yeah, the comp. It's just now. Randy's got this. Randy and their fan have this very quickly. Clean this up. Moving on to the losers finals up against crow and anir also it's worth pointing out that randy and their fan have gotten at least third place which means that randy will ultimately have the top spot in the lobster roll series due to the bonus points they'll be winning because they'll be winning at least 100 and they only needed 33 yeah, they only needed 30... No, sorry. They only needed 39. And they have 100. So well done, Randy. You have earned back... You have earned back the standings, or you will eventually, because you might place higher, but at the very least you place third, and that's 100 bonus points. So yeah. Well done to you. So now, moving on to the Losers Finals. Crone and Nier against Randy and their fan. Which should be a fairly even match, honestly. I'm a little unsure how this is going to pan out. But it is going to be a map. Because that's how this works. Plan a map. So yeah, this is... I mean, Anir and Randy are pretty even. Crow and Randy's fan are probably pretty even. The Crow's a little more experienced. I think I think there's a slight advantage to Anir and Crow, just because Crow does have probably more maybe more experience than Randy's fan. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm actually curious. Who is Randy's fan? No, they don't really appear to be anybody. Yeah, it looks like they're just they're just new. 
Okay, well, that that's that then. So yeah, Crone and Ear are starting out. Crow bans random crags. And Randy bans Zed. Which I don't blame them for because that was the map they got knocked out on. Yeah, worth noting, this this is a repeat of the winner semifinals match. Randy and their fan are definitely having a time. They don't want to deal with Zed again. Probably Probably be okay with Ankle and Wastelands or Sapphire Shores. Might be okay with Sparkles Reef, I don't know. I guess Zed's really the only one that's bad. Crow bans Vantage, not surprising. They haven't really seemed to want it. And Randy, what are they going to ban? I mean, if Ackland Wastelands or Sapphire Shores is there... I mean, either way, there's a possibility of having a giant map. So it's like, which giant map do you want? Either! The answer is either. What they don't want is water. So the only way to Sapphire Shores are Ackland Wastelands. I kind of expect Sapphire Shores again, but Ackland Wastelands wouldn't surprise me. I mean, <laughs> Danger Noodle memeing that Randy's fan is also Randy. Randy's their own fan. No, it's it's not. It, for, for the record, I just checked... And no, Randy's fan. I mean, obviously they're from Russia, not from the UK. But also, I checked. There's no known Smurfs. Or like, so it's not, it's not Randy. But it also doesn't appear to be anybody else. They're just Randy's fan. I think it might literally be brand new. When did they sign up? Yeah, like, sign up three weeks ago. Well, at any rate, we are in Ackland Wastelands. One of the maps that would not have surprised me. Lonely Wastes would have surprised me. I would have genuinely been shocked if they had played on that, but nope, we're playing on Ackland Wastelands, which is not shocking in the slightest. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's show you the maps. Didn't have those up, but yeah, we are on Ackland Wastelands. Now, just as I said, I fixed this problem, however. The important thing is that I show you the game in progress. Everything else is just a nice bonus. Well, okay, now actually it would be ideal if I showed you everything, but sometimes I screw up. Anyhow, let us get going. So, right, Mumble Clan is Crone and Nier. Pro is Randy and their fan. And Ackland Wastelands, of course, is a map where taking these south and north, northeast or southwest corners is the way to win. Taking one or both is pretty much the way to go. And that is something we've seen from other players in this map. We haven't actually seen either of these players in this map. We also haven't seen air or gunships plopped on this map. We've seen them used later, but not plopped. Last time Ackland Wastelands was in a tournament was a few years ago, and we saw gunship plops all the time. Though admittedly, that was also when gunship and air plops were more popular. Honestly, I think spiders just gotten so popular to the point that they're just constantly the second plop. Like, you don't use... You don't use other plops. You use spiders. That is how you do. Which I guess works? I don't know. Anyhow, with that, we have... It's like a Nier and Crow trying to plan out. Crow going for the lower... Going for the natural, and you're going for the main base, going for Cloakies. Crow, unclear what they're trying to go for right now. Same time, Randy's fan is going down to the expansion. Randy up the top. A little surprised the lower level player is the one in front. I mean, they have a hard... Presumably, they have a harder time defending. And they'd be more useful, like, throwing units from behind, but... Nope. Neither team taking that approach. Oh, whoops. I apologize to everyone in... I apologize to everyone in the Netherlands that 
Randy's fan is apparently Dutch, not Russian. So, my bad. Did not mean, did not mean to cause offense. It's just a different shade of blue. Oh, wait, they're both Dutch. How is it a different shade of blue? What the heck? Okay, people pointing out that Russia is white, blue, red, not white, not red, white, blue. Look, I'm sorry, but it's really hard to tell the tricolors apart. Why tricolors? I mean, at least Germany had the right idea of not going for red or some combination of blue and white. But still, that's the only one that you can kind of distinguish because it's like, what other ones have orange or black? Which might be others have orange or black. I'm not a vexillologist. I just make mouth noises to video games. And also write software. But mostly write software. Actually, the mouth noises stuff is just a hobby. But right now I'm making mouth noises to video games. So back to the video games. Crow sending out fleas, as is Randy's fan, because both players is going, you know what? Let's hold the center. Pretty much evenly, too, actually. <laughs> It was briefly a nice little line from all the way down here, but not anymore. And you're trying to find a path through that? Actually, well, they are finding a path through that. There's no question of that. But Randy's fan should be able to expand a little bit faster than Crow would appear. Crow being a bit more aggressive. I mean, they haven't been really contested over these fleas. They know there's nothing going at them. Yeah, Randy and their fan far more focused on setting up their expansion, the safe expansions. Then they are quickly taking the Northeast. Clearly very confident they can take it later on in the game if they have to. Wait, why am I listed as England? Oh, because it's a language choice, not a country choice. Doi. <laughs> so with... I can't even focus anymore. Honestly, I don't know why. I mean, it's not a whole lot going on right now. It really is just set up. Like, Randy with the ducks. Goes Amphbots. Amphspider, that's, that's a new one. But yeah, Randy with the ducks. Well, it's a new one on me, anyway. Anir with the glaives going around the side trying to raid out. But both teams being kind of cautious. I mean, neither team has really been expanding to the center to try to take it out. Or to the... Northeast or southwest to take it quickly. They've both been expanding very slowly and carefully. And Anir getting... Getting put in a position to be Venom food. Same time. Ducks, uh, they're doing what they do best against Blaves. Ripping them to pieces. Actually, maybe not. See, Duck changes recently have completely nerfed them a little bit. They used to be able to completely take out Glit take out glaze but they got shifted a little bit so they're not firing both rockets at once or both missiles at once because used to be they file fire both missiles at once and then a glaive could maybe dodge it just right but that got tweaked because it was just it was too swingy one way or the other having the ducks one shot glaze unless they miss which occasionally happened so it got shifted just one torpedo at a time But with that, that, that forward push of the ducks, at the very least, allowed for Randy's fan to set up a little bit more securely into the north, into the southwest, and the northeast as well. Yeah, considering how much I screw up cardinal directions, you think, yeah, I am not, I did not take geography at all in any in any level of school. It wasn't even my weak suit. I just didn't even bother. At any rate, ducks. Able to wipe out some things, but the Venoms are still going to be a problem. Still, though, there's a little bit more of an Alpha Strike to them. They have a, more of an opportunity to take out the Venoms. And also, these Glaives are kind of committing suicide. Actually, having done that... Okay, the Glaives over here are still a threat. Glaives to the Southwest are still a threat. Though there are enough Venoms that they aren't that much of a threat. Randy's fan might be able to push this out completely. Same time, Randy just holding on in the north Northeast... So it's worth pointing, Mumble Clan does have a stronger economy. They're getting a lot more overdrive. Pro is relying more on reclaim than anything else to try to stay in this.
So again, the Venoms coming in. I, I, I expect Venoms are going to be nerfed after this tournament. I mean, they got buffed right before, like, a couple weeks before the tournament for other reasons, but I think... I think some changes are needed. They've kind of become the spider buff unit, which I guess kind of makes sense, because they're supposed to have a raider, and that's supposed to be the raider, essentially, is the Venom. And they are expensive. They're 200 apiece, compared to Glaives that are, like, 60, but... EMP is a lot. Like, EMP is real strong. Even with the low damage that Venoms deal, just the fact that they can stun things out, enough numbers... It's kind of like daggers, where just you have enough of them, you just kill anything. Venoms are the same way, but without the quirkiness of line... of line splash. They just... They just have regular splash. This might be the end of them, though. Knights, yeah, being a bit of a problem. I'm just drawing battle lines over to the northeast side of the map. The Ducks, I am really not sure who's going to win this. This is a micro battle. Like, Randy's commander, they're in a bit of a, in a tricky position. They could jump out of them. But the Ducks, yeah, I don't know. Those Venoms will be coming in, and they'll try to stun, but the Ducks can just shoot them all. So it's hard to tell. It, clearly, Crow is not confident that they can actually push in with that. And I can't blame them. Same time, and you're very confident they can push in with these glaives over to the southwest. And it's kind of working. Getting some damage done, but ultimately Randy coming in with the backup. Able to take out some of these glaives. And that is that for that assault. Same time, Redback support, or Venom supported Redback coming over to the south to try to take that out. Well, at the same time, there's the Venoms coming in. The Ducks were out of position, and Crow, realizing this, moves in to take advantage. The Ducks are going to be able to reinforce, though. And a gunship switch! Hey, it's gunships! Ducks coming in as well on top of the on top of the Locusts. To at least distract, if nothing else. But the distraction does not help Randy's commander as it goes down regardless. And the Ducks, unfortunately, are not enough. Having moved out of position to defend, turned out to be the straw that broke the camel's back. The northeast is completely in Crow's hands. Southwest has not fallen, however, and Nier is still able to hold on to it. And has not lost their commander either. There is not a whole lot of time for Pro to really come back with this. The economy is going to go in Mumble Clan's favor quickly, and these knights are presenting a major problem. They might be overextending, though. Randy's fan looking to take advantage of that. Having, you know, Delta Matrician coming back with the Venoms. Taking out one, taking out two. Three remain, though. And more are on the way. So unfortunately, Randy's fan will have to retreat. As these knights are just not going to let them get to an ear. Pro looking to find another bit of ground to push onto. Same time though, Randy and they have the locusts are starting to cause issues. But not really finding all that much actual payoff for them. I don't know, it's, it really doesn't seem to have been worth the investment. Same time, Anir just continuing to bottle up here. Now, granted, I don't think that's going to actually pan out, because ultimately, you know, Anir's forces are pretty vulnerable. The Venoms are coming in, taking out the Stinger, stunning it out so it can't fire a single shot, taking out several of the Knights as well. And on top of the, rec on top of the Recluse support, at least something, but unfortunately it's not enough once again more Reckless is coming in, though. Providing a little bit extra damage. And yes, Venoms did die to something. They're not invulnerable. They just... When you have enough of them, you can stop things from shooting you, but... I mean, 2400 HP, that's a lot to stun out. Not really a practical option. Still, though, another Stinger goes down. That's gotta been, like, 500 wasted metal at this point. Yeah, that's... That's 450... Yeah, that's easily 500 wasted metal with all the ones that produced. Maybe 600. Still, some reclaim is there to at least make it a little bit less, a little less onerous. At the same time, though, oh, Venom's coming back to fight the Venoms. Why not? Along with the boys, because, you know, extra HP is always nice. Also, skirmishers have historically gotten rid of Venoms. Sometimes that's to be a bit heavier than, like, a Ronin, but they have gotten rid of Venoms historically. Same time, though, near... Bit of a tight spot right now. The Recluses are going to be causing problems. Same time over the north. Crow has been forced to retreat. 
Randy's able to maintain some territory control, while Randy's fan is able to take the southwest. But Mumble Clan maintains complete dominance. I don't know, near goes for a swim. But yeah, Mumble Clan maintains complete dominance over the economy, though. Still, 10 metal per second advantage without reclaim taken into account. So it is unfortunately still a bit of a problem. Randy, though, they are building up that Locust Force. Antier has not been built yet. Tarantula is on the way. I think there might have been one already. Yes, there are. There is, in fact, one already. There are, in fact, four already. All in position over the northeast side of the map. So, Antier exists, but it doesn't exist over the southwest. So, Randy's fan would be able to at least have those locusts come in. Randy would be able to support their teammate. Same with over here, though. Well, those knights are a little scary. Might want to not get too close to them. Gotta be careful with the Venoms as well. There's needs to be a change. Randy needs to change out their forces. And their fan. Bulkheads are being built up, which is a pretty good change. Would kind of expect to see a crab, though. To help get rid of the knights. Although the recklesses are also a good choice. That has been helping. And nice with the locusts on the raid. So at least the center has been opened up. Randy and their fan gradually taking back more and more territory as Crow goes for another assault. One which I would say is ill-advised. Two of the Venoms going down for free. Okay, getting a little bit of damage and getting rid of one of the... Or stunning one of the bulkheads, but not getting rid of it in any capacity. But those boys are just making a lot of trouble. Bulkheads are helping out, but mainly it's just the boys. Boys with some stinger support. Crow is forced to retreat. And unfortunately, this force has been thinned out quite a bit. Not enough for Randy to feel confident pushing in yet, but I imagine it's not going to take too long. Same time, though, Randy's fan able to hold the line over to the south, completing the east-west split that this map has. And now, though, even with the east-west split, Mumble Clan still remains ahead. They have better overdrive production, They have mainly because of this main base section here. And they have a better overall structure. I mean, okay, mainly because this was killed, but even that's not much. I mean, it's a lot of... A lot of overdrives isn't here. Oh, pros short on energy. That's what it is. That's the problem. Need to get a lot more power plants going. Because right now, they are pretty close to stalling on energy. And the caretaker repair does not help. That does cost energy. Same time, though, might have been worth it. Crow coming in for another pass and losing even more forces in the process. Might be able to take out another bulkhead, though. But bulkheads aren't that expensive. It's not hard to replace them. Although they do take out the stinger, that is harder to replace. But it might have been worth it. Strong defense and depth coming in here from Randy as they're able to just make a fighting retreat. Able to take out basically everything that's been built up. And now having wiped out all the frontline forces, there's room to get in, try to get rid of all these recluses. I mean, it's a skirmisher battle at this point, but the boys slow down everything they touch. Unfortunately, the Locusts can't really come in to help out, but that's fine. The Tarantulas are most of the force here. And Randy knows it. They're going in. They have no reason to resist. They have no reason to retreat. They have no reason to stop. They have every reason to push. Because only three Recklesses exist to stop them, and those Recklesses are not going to last long once the boys get in range. If the boys get in range. Granted, that is proving to be the key problem in this particular fight. But still, even with all that, I mean, Randy Sfan has managed to clear the other side of that. Coming in with the Venoms as well into the main base, taking out what has been essentially a revenge gunship switch over from here from Ran from Anir. And those Locusts are not going to last too long at all. Not to mention the Venoms coming in, breaking up a bunch of the overdrive that's been built up. But primarily the overdrive was energy efficiency, and now the energy has been taken back. Some cool fusion plant. No, I guess there's a high wind. Okay, Crow looking... No, Anir looking to resign. I mean, not surprisingly, they do have a bunch of enemies in their base they can't really do anything about. Crow agrees, and that is Anir and Crow knocked out. Randy and Randy's fan move on to the grand finals to fight Pudis and Thomas. Who have thus far, I should note, knocked out Every other top seeded player in the every other top seeded team in this tournament, with the exception of Dying Throne and Flap, who they sorry, with the exception of Randy and Randy's fan. The only ones that haven't had a chance to fight yet. So yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, 
But we'll have a short break before that happens. Because I always do before the Grand Finals, so stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 